It is with a very heavy heart that I stand before you. But we come to celebrate a life. And what a great life. As I come before you today at the Fallbrook Church, this great black cathedral that is located in Houston, Texas, which was the seat of her beloved Texas 18th District of the United States Congress. And where Jack Yates High School where George Floyd was raised in her beloved third ward that she loved walking through the third ward with Sheila Jackson Lee Congresswoman Waters was like walking through Watts with you <laughs> or, or walking through Miami like you, Congresswoman Wilson. I mean, she was loved by her people in Houston because they knew she loved them. And as in the tradition of the black church, I can't begin to make the case for Sheila Jackson Lee without doing what my mother taught me when you stand up in a black church. We proclaim that God is good and all the time to the clergy assembled here, to the saints, to the dignitaries, to the past president of the United States of America who was on program as well as secretary, past secretary of the United States who was on the program and to the future <laughs> to those who are on the program who will be the future U.S. presidents on the program. <laughs> to all the congressional leaders and all of the elected officials, certainly the ones here in Houston who knew her best, but especially, especially to her family, her husband, Elwin, her children, Jason, and Erica. I will make the case that Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee was not only a brilliant political scientist educated at Yale University, she was not only a brilliant attorney educated at the University of Virginia, she was not only a brilliant thought leader, she was not only a brilliant strategist, she was not only a courageous warrior, she was not only a great public servant, but Sheila Jackson Lee, with every fiber in her body, was a tireless advocate. She was a voice for the voiceless. She was a fighter for those who Americans often forgot. Sheila Jackson Lee was a person who understood what good is having influence if you didn't use it when it matters most. The first time fate would have me interact with 
Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. Reverend Al was at the Trayvon Martin rally in Sanford, Florida. She didn't think it robbery to fly to Florida for this little 17-year-old black boy uh, who was walking home minding his business, had a bag of Skittles and a can of iced tea, uh, who got shot in the heart by the neighborhood watch volunteer. And Congresswoman Will says she, she talked to me, she said, even though it's in Florida, you see, I am the chair of the, I'm a co-chair of the Criminal Justice Committee at the time, I believe, and she said, we gotta use this momentum in the face of this tragedy to be able to make systemic change. And she was fighting gallantly, she was fighting ferociously to introduce legislation to oppose this stand your ground law because she says she believed it disproportionately will impact black people because she loved black people and she she talked about at the u.s congress with that bag of skittles and i said just like it was yesterday it was 12 years ago you remember speaker pelosi she had the bag of skittles and the iced tea talking about we can't let Trayvon Martin's death be in vain. And I never forget one day we were with Trayvon's mother and I was just saying, thank you for fighting so hard for Trayvon. And she said to her Sabrina, Jason, she said, you see, I got a, a son named Jason. And I believe if this would have happened to Jason, I would have wanted you to fight just as hard for me to get justice, Sabrina Fulton. So I got to fight just as hard for you to get justice because she said before President Obama said if I had a son, he would look like Trayvon. She was already saying Trayvon is all of our children. And then she went to Ferguson, Missouri, a couple years after that when Michael Brown was killed. You all remember, hands up, don't shoot. It's hard to believe August 9th, a couple of weeks, it'll be the 10-year anniversary of the Ferguson uprising. And she was fighting for police reform. I mean, we fighting for it still today, but she was fighting for it back then. And I remember she, as the criminal justice committee leader, she was saying, we got to crump, we got to get this legislation passed. And she, you know, Shashrina and Glenn, her staffers, you know, she, there was no nine to five with Sheila Jackson Lee. <laughs> She'll call you at one in the morning. I'm working on this legislation. I need to know some facts. <laughs> and she was fighting to get it passed. And I remember it was her zealous advocacy and convincing the Obama administration that we had to allocate millions of dollars for a body cam video because we can't have the police word be the gospel when they kill un black people unjustly. She was fearless. And then Reverend Al is right. There was no other congressional member who came to more funerals of people who were killed senselessly by those who were supposed to protect and serve. She, she came to Breonna Taylor. She came to Tyree Nichols. She came to Alton. She came to so many funerals. I expected to see her every time we had a case that if nobody else was going to be there, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee was going to be there standing up for that family. And, and Breonna Taylor and Pamela Turner and Atiana Jefferson and Sandra Bland, the black women, Alicia Thomas, those who were killed by the police, she was so, so courageous in saying, we got to say their names as fervent as we say anybody else's name because she 
understood like Malcolm X that the black woman was the most disrespected, the most neglected, and the most unprotected person in America. And Sheila Jackson Lee said, not on my watch. Not on my watch. And then my lawyer, Reverend Al, Derek Johnson, Reverend Barbara, her homeboy, George Perry Floyd, whose family is here today, uh, Philonis Floyd, Brandon Williams, would you all please stand? Because she loved the George Floyd family. She fought so hard for the George Floyd family to get justice, to get the George Floyd Justice and Policing Bill passed, Lita Jeffries, I mean, she fought, she kept reintroducing it Congress after Congress after Congress. And I, I remember that first time then it didn't pass. And everybody was disappointed because we thought if ever there was a time we were finally going to get police reform in America, it was after George Floyd was tortured to death on that video. And I was a little defeated, and I remember talking to the congresswoman, and I think, Shashrina, you were on the call. She said, uh, you know, Attorney Crump, I've been bringing the bill for Juneteenth up for 10 years. And we ain't going to give up on that. She said John Conyers was bringing up the reparations bill for 15 years, and we ain't going to give up on that. And I don't care if I have to bring up the George Floyd bill for 20 years. We ain't going to give up on that. That's who Sheila Jackson Lee was. That's who Sheila Jackson Lee was. And so I say to you, all these cases, all these tragedies, litigation that affected it, marginalized minorities like the Fearless Fund litigation where they were suing the black women for raising $100 million to help black women start up businesses. She used her legal acumen to advise us on how to fight that battle. And so I say to you, brothers and sisters, she never gave up. She had that Harriet Tubman spirit that she was just going to keep going back to save us over and over again, risking her life. She didn't care about what they said about Sheila Jackson Lee because she know who she is and who she is. And that was Sheila Jackson Lee every day, whether in Congress or in the community. Lita Jeffers, you say that uh, you got <laughs> spontaneously drafted by Congresswoman Lee. I know Congressman Jonathan Jackson said, I don't care who you were, you were a staff member to Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. <laughs> I remember being here in Houston, and we did the Martin Luther King parade. She was campaigning for re-election, and we were going after we finished the Martin Luther King parade. She said, come on, Attorney Crump, we're going to the third war. And I said, well, okay, we got something planned in the third war? She said, no, we're just going to see the people. <laughs> And we were walking through. She gave me a microphone. I was like, <laughs> okay, Congresswoman. And so, you know, we try as long as we quick on our feet. I said, Erica J., I said, Sheila Jackson Lee, she's for you. She's for me. She's for we. She said, Attorney General, say that again. And I want you all to say it with me, because it's true. Sheila Jackson Lee, she's for you. Sheila Jackson Lee, she's for me. Sheila Jackson Lee, she's for we. And then the people in the third war started getting a little beat to it. They said, Jackson Lee, she's for you. Jackson Lee, she's for me. Jackson Lee, she's for we. And I just saw how much she inspired our people to believe. And I would say, in conclusion, when George Floyd Bill didn't pass, and I was disappointed, she told Shashrina and Glenn, I don't know who else 
of us that was on the call, she said that we just got to go out and we got to tell people that George Floyd blood is on this ballot in the 2020 presidential election. And we went to do Zooms with high school students who were 17 years old, who would be 18 by the time of the election, and 18 year olds, and we talked about George Floyd blood is on the ballot. And she said, you gotta understand, Attorney Crump, we can't lose this momentum. We can't lose this moment. She said that, you know, this video is gonna motivate people all over America, but especially people in our community to go out and vote. And it was because of that indomitable spirit that it was people standing in long lines in Atlanta, in Detroit, in Philadelphia, in Cleveland, in Minneapolis. I mean, people standing in long lines thinking about George Floyd, thinking about Breonna Taylor, thinking about Ahmaud Aubrey, thinking about so many others. And she was so right because it was that video that helped motivate our community to vote in record numbers till we were able to see the election of President Joseph R. Biden as the President of the United States. And when he became president, y'all remember I talked a little bit about that Juneteenth bill that she kept sponsoring all those years? When President Biden became elected with the blood on the ballot of George Floyd, she never let go of the fight because we have to see the long game. It ain't gonna happen in a day. That's what made Sheila Jackson Lee so brilliant. And so brothers and sisters, I tell you, there was nobody more prouder when President Biden signed the Juneteenth bill to make it a federal holiday that Sheila Jackson Lee, leading a bipartisan Texas delegation, sponsored year after year after year. And I tell you, Sonia Massey, Sonia Massey shot in the face saying, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Yeah, it's that video that's going to motivate us just like George Floyd video did in 2020 to go out and vote and help elect the first woman to be president of the United States. That's what Sheila Jackson Lee legacy will be. Sheila Jackson Lee for you. Sheila Jackson Lee for me. Sheila Jackson Lee for we. God bless you, Sheila Jackson Lee.